haven't seen happen a lot in years. I mean, the I love to support Ingram. Everybody knows I do. But his 60-yard run doesn't need to be credited to the offensive line or Ingram's ability, even though they those were factors. That was a great study and play call by Sean Payton and the design and how he confused that defensive front. There was really no other option. I mean, Ingram or I, I Hightower like both could have had a major, major breakthrough there. It was just oh, yeah. a great play calling. The ingenuity there is just I don't I haven't seen that consistently. And I seem to see plays like that every quarter when I went back and watched the game. Whereas like the like the Giants game you brought up, and this I obviously haven't watched that game in the past couple of weeks, so it's not very fresh in my memory. But I can't think of plays every quarter or every other drive where he just came out with something mind blowing, like, man, that that's just a complete dismantling of a defense. And I saw that Sunday with Sean Payton, and you just saw him so anime on the sidelines. That's the only reason I throw out that's his best game since suspension for me, is for those type of reasons. And I'm sure that we can bring up a couple of other games, but I think any time that when you compare it in the whole Greg Williams, Payton aspect, there's obviously a lot of angst and ire there. So there was going to be fuel to that fire. I just want him to carry it on. He's got to be able to do that against the Lions. He's got to be able to do that against the two Tampa games we've got coming up. And for the love of baby Jesus, we've got to beat the Falcons. Oh, amen to that. Yeah, and, and, and just to be you know, just to be fair to your position on it, I'm not necessarily you know di- disagreeing with you. It, it's tough to say you know 550 yards, you know 200 yards rushing, 300 yards passing, 49 points, and you could have scored 60 if you wanted to uh-huh. on the number two scoring defense, number five overall defense that anyone with uh, a football brain will agree. If they're not elite. They're very, very good, and you just, and probably the best front four on a defensive front in the NFL. Yeah, no, I don't think there's any question of that. So uh, the impressiveness of what they pulled off is is undeniable. I think, and, and this is the part to me that's the most impressive, and also gives me the most, um, I guess you could say, hope going forward for these these next five games. Is you know the the, the scheme tweaks were were genius and you know some of it you know you, you see something all the time and you don't appreciate it i've i've talked to some you know some writers and bloggers and and scouts and and people you know from from other fan bases and and even some you know some college guys i know out here and you know i just sometimes i just ask them like what do you guys see when you know you look at the saints offense and and these are football heads mm-hmm. and all of them pretty much unanimously go, Sean Payton gives me headaches. And, and they mean it in a good way. Like, there's wrinkles that he does consistently that we go, oh, I see that play, that one's coming. And because we see it all the time, we go, well, that's just, that's just one of our regular plays. Because yeah. you, you've kind of reached that desensitized point of, yeah, but we use it all the time because it's genius. It mm-hmm. works. It's kind of like that, uh, remember the Titans line. It's like Novocaine. You, know, you, you just hit it. And... I, I, this was definitely a game where Sh- Sean was showing off. Like Sean was just very clearly going, there are people out there who believe I won a Super Bowl because of you. I just want to remind everyone that you managed to make the defense not terrible enough so that I couldn't win. We won because of my offense, which is, you know, that, that, that's a fact. Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me that the Snee to Hightower 50-yard touchdown pass was – Rubbing salt in a wound? No way. The only thing, and, and I, I said this on, on my own show a little while ago, the only thing that was missing from that play was Sean Payton looking Greg Williams dead in the eye from across the sideline and doing the Greg Williams crotch chop across <laughs> the field at him when he, when, when he called that. You're up 42-21 in the fourth quarter. The game is over, and you just go, you know, 50 is just such a nice number. Let's try to get 50. I, I, I honest to God, I was hoping they were going to go for two. I, I, I thought they, <laughs> they, they might just go for two. Just put to the get 50, 50 burger up there. Yeah. Just to put it up there. And I would have been in full support of it. Only be, not only, but, but in large part because if, if you know the story between the two of them, yeah. Greg Williams is the one that made it personal. And if someone cost me $8 million, I would do a lot more than just embarrass them at their job. Yeah. 
Well, I, and, I mentioned this earlier because I'm with you on that ooh. opinion. I actually said that uh, Sean Payton didn't go out to, you know, destroy Greg Williams' defense. He went out to embarrass Greg Williams as a person. And I, I really, and maybe that's why I'm so passionate in my belief, and that's why I'm so excited and so exuberant, and and how I'm explaining it is, I love to see Sean Payton at that level because we used to see that level of Sean Payton arrogance and narcissism and cockiness, for lack of better words, consistently 2006 or 2011. He came in with a chip as big as the Superdome that he was going to beat you at his game or at your game and make you look foolish. And I love that about him. And I, I want that to be back and not just back, but consistently. I want him to go in, you know, and, and coaches like Caldwell or Belichick or whoever, McCarthy, and say, I'll run your plays, run them better, and destroy your team. Because Nick Underhill did a – I mean, this obviously isn't for sure because Sean Payton didn't come out and say it, but Nick Underhill did a, a great article studying one of the big Ingram runs and how it resembled – that one of the same plays the Bills ran against the Rams defense and how it was successful, he took a play that the Rams had already seen, had already studied what they did wrong and how they should fix it, re-ran it, and still ran it down their throats successfully. And, and, and honestly, better because they got more yards than the Bills play did. That, to me, just gets me all but giddy inside back. as a fan. Yeah, no, it's... I think some of it, not all of it, um, but I think some of why we haven't seen the same edge, the same bravado, the same, you know, me against the world, you can't touch me mentality from Peyton since he came back mm -hmm. is, if, if we're being completely honest, they haven't had the roster to do it. Like, they've had historically bad defenses. Yeah, I mean, I'm not they, denying that. It started two in 2013, and then Jimmy got hurt. I, I'm fully convinced if Jimmy and um, got a great time for a brain fart, who <laughs> uh, Jabari Greer, yeah, did not get hurt in that Patriots game in 2013. That Sean was about to turn on the switch, dial it up to 11, and gone. Okay, who's getting 60 dropped on him this week? Like it's yeah. like the old Larry Bird yeah. story where he walked into the All Star game and went, "So which one of you guys is getting second? Like that's who Sean Payton is to me. Uh huh. But it's not the kind of braggadocious swagger when you got like the little five two guy that wants to go pick a fight with the bodybuilder, like the little chihuahua. Oh, like, Come on, no, man, let's no. go, let's go. Payton does that when he believes he can, when he can, believes he can follow through on. It. No, no, no. To me, and, and I'm sorry if I sound like that when I explain it. To me, Sean oh, no, no, Payton I, I'm is the, the distinction for me. Sean Payton is the Floyd Mayweather type of coach, where he has the ability, he has the the history where he can come up and say, maybe not best head coach, but in terms of offensive minds, he's definitely should be in the considerations for some of the best that we can bring up and talk about. He's that type of arrogant. Bring on whatever defensive coordinator you have and watch me dismantle their play calling. And he's done it consistently for years now. He just hasn't done it as much. And I understand the roster argument, but I don't know. Even from an offensive standpoint, I realize how your defense performs greatly affects the offense. And I think that's part of it, but I see that as a small variable. I think a lot of it was the, the league took a lot of wind out of his sails when that whole – I still think it gets to him even now, that whole having to sit out a year. you know. And hopefully the, the Greg Williams was a little bit of that inner redemption that helps him move on from that. I, I definitely hope it is. And, and I've, I've always been a strong um, supporter of the idea that when you get to the level that they're at in sports, um, there, there is a physical aspect to it. There's no question. Physical talent matters. Um, you know, for coaches, you know, the, the instinct, the, the, the cerebral capacity to wrap your head around game plans, understand the flow of a game. You know, great play callers are born. They're not made. Sean yeah. Payton's a great play caller. Well, I think a perfect – not that I'm trying to cut you off. A perfect example of that would be – Rob Ryan versus Rex and Buddy. I mean, Rob runs the exact same system, just not near as effective as his brother or his father. Yeah, he's got he's got there. There is true genius in what Rob wants to do. Yeah, there is is true idiocy in what Rob actually does, 
and it is, <laughs> it's not because he's an idiot. It's yeah. it's you know, back to what you know what we talked about before about execution is is a huge part of it. But but I also think for players, but then also for Peyton, and this it kind of goes to the the larger thing with even the improvement on the defense. Momentum is a real thing, and and it's not this, you know, sometimes fans in the media make it out to be this mystical thing, like just because a team is hot, they can't be beat. It's what being hot means to the personnel, to the mentality of the players. Some guys, you know, most players generally operate at 70% of their capacity, you know, and and, and then for people this gifted, 70% of their capacity is extraordinary. When you start losing, you, you start getting down on yourself, you start giving up, you start losing that will, your, your average performance, you're dropping down to 60, down to 50. Some players just flat out quit. You know, Brandon Browner, 20, yeah. 30, 10, negative 45. And then but, every now and then you have something happen like a, a benching that takes you up to that 100% mark like Mark Ingram's needed for a couple of years. Yeah, or, or, or even, even above it because and, – and this is – and I, and I really do believe you, you do have situations where players are achieving at above 100%. Now, I know I'm crossing sports here, but, you know, certain players have the ability to allow you to elevate yourself. You know, certain you know, coaches and situations can do it too. Um, but it's, it's one of the reasons why, like, a, a player like a LeBron James in basketball has the success he has. Because not only does his ability allow him to achieve on an echelon almost no one else can even imagine, but by his effect and his existence, he allows you to be the best possible version of yourself. So in essence, you're at 110% because on your own, you could never get to this level. But now you're as efficient as you possibly can be because you're accentuating what makes you good. I think DA has done a great job of doing that for parts of the defense. Uh, part of that is his adjustment um, and, and learning how to compensate with the, the talent deficit that, that they're under. Yeah. But right. even more so on the offensive side, Drew Brees has that effect where he makes the players around him better. But it's a fact that when you put better players around him and he makes them better, they become great. He, he did Obvious, it with Jimmy. Yeah. He did it with Sproles. And you still see Sproles looking great. Sproles in Philly is nothing like what he was in, in New Orleans. Right. He, he's sturdy he looked, in he Philly. He has in flashes. Philly. Yeah. And, and it's not even just the physical thing with his age. He's not being maximized. Yeah. That's why he flashes instead of every game. You're just like, did Sproles just do that again? How do you not cover him? No, no, no. They can't cover him. That's the thing. Yeah. And he's starting to get to that point with this offense. With Ingram finally, you know, we, we, we had an argument on Twitter uh, a couple of weeks ago about this. And at the time, I contest that I was right. Mark Ingram <laughs> was not playing well. I believe Mark Ingram was benched for a reason. He yeah. earned that benching, and it wasn't just the fumble. However, yeah. the monster that has emerged past that is the best possible version of Mark. So all of a sudden, Mark Ingram yeah. looks like an explosive player, which he hasn't in his entire NFL career. He is making players miss in the open field by beating them to the spot, not just by bouncing off of tackles. He is decisive. And he is energized in a way I have never seen. And that Mark Ingram well, I think, allows me, Drew to do what we want Drew to do. I think it's funny I brought you on the show. And one of the reasons I like – the reason I brought you on and asked you on is the same reason that I have Brian come on is because we have so many disagreements on Twitter, but they're respectful and we don't hate each other afterwards. We actually see valid points in each other's arguments. With me – I'm going to actually use something that you've said for months now, probably years since we've talked about this. Mark Ingram has always been a back who could break tackles. He's actually always been in just about every year that he – well, the past three years. Let's say from 2014, his first Pro Bowl season until now. He's been able to make tacklers miss, but not in the way that he's been doing it from the past, what, four weeks now. And the reason being is a word that you've said for so long he didn't have, and that I actually agreed with you – because I'd never seen it, and that's bursts. And that goes into what you're talking about, me- beating them to the spot. He has shown not, not just speed, which he showed like on that 70-yard big run he had earlier, the 75-yarder, but he's hitting the holes with such conviction and burst in his cut. He's making people run into their, you know, their own players and miss badly to where they're only able to do 
attempts at shoestring tackles, and he was never doing that his first six year, first five years with us, ever. And that's something I will always agree with you with. This is a 